Biblical prophecies are messages found in the Bible that are believed to predict or foreshadow future events that are related to God's plan for humanity. Today, many people interpret these prophecies as relevant to current or future world events, seeing them as signs of the end times or as guidance for better spiritual and moral living. Now, this was a video request sent in by Dark Shine the Kid 4463. I have several other requests that I plan to get to. Some topics aren't as easy to present due to YouTube's community guidelines, but we'll get there. Anyway, I do want to talk a bit about biblical prophecy, but more than that, I want to talk a bit more about cycles. Because Better understanding cycles will help us to better understand where we are in the timeline of existence and the fulfillment of those prophecies. Understanding cycles is also going to give us a better idea of what's coming in the near future. Because let me tell you, there are a few privileged individuals who do know what's coming. And they know what's coming based on the cycles we're going to talk about today. This is absolutely something that they do not want you to know because it would mean losing control of the narrative. And it would also mean losing something that they value the most, power. Biblical prophecy today continues to be a source of hope, fear, and there is often much speculation. But it inspires people to examine their faith. It helps them to better make moral decisions and to look for understanding of the world's direction. The interpretations of prophecies vary and the challenge here is understanding the metaphorical language from literal predictions. We understand that the focus of biblical prophecy today involves the study of the end times, known as eschatology. Predictions about events like the second coming of Christ, the rise of the Antichrist, the Great Tribulation, the establishment of a new heaven and earth. Many people believe that modern events in Israel and the Middle East are fulfillments of biblical prophecies, such as the reestablishment of Israel as a nation in 1948, some people believe that aligns with passages in Ezekiel and Isaiah. Current world events such as wars, natural disasters, pandemics, social chaos, some people view these as signs that we are living in the last days, as predicted in books like Matthew 24 and Revelation. Some interpretations of biblical prophecy suggest that a future global leader, often referred to as the Antichrist, will rise to power, creating a one-world government or economic system that will oppose God's kingdom. We can see that prophecies often use symbolic language that can be open to interpretation. The beast, the seals, the trumpets, etc., have been linked to everything from specific historical events to symbolic representations of good versus evil. Now, cosmological cycles are the recurring patterns and rhythms observed in the cosmos, such as the movement of planets, stars, and other celestial bodies. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That was written in Genesis chapter one, verse 14. And that word seasons are the cycles I'm referring to. 
And these cycles can influence events on Earth and have been studied forever by various cultures to predict future occurrences, many of which have been very significant. Understanding these cycles can help predict what is going to happen to us socially, environmentally, and spiritually. You see, folks, they know something is coming and a change in season. I'm not talking about seasonal weather patterns, although that does play a role in this. I'm talking about a larger seasonal change that comes with changes in government, changes in currency, changes in laws, changes in our food supply, changes to our physical health. I'm talking about major changes in our civilization. Because it's simple. They can take a look at history, take a look at the timeline, and based on past events at certain points in repetitive cycles, they can very accurately predict that another similar event will occur once we reach a certain point in the cycle again. Make sense? The issue is most of us don't bother to look back in history or ancient history to find these patterns. It's just not something that has occurred to most people. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. Back in April, we had the solar eclipse and we also had a planetary alignment. Then in June, we had another alignment of six planets, Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, Venus, and Saturn. And we just had another alignment last month on August 24th. I don't know if there were any others, but three alignments in a year, that's not a sign. That's like an alarm going off. Now it doesn't do anybody any good if there is a sign in the heavens and you don't have time to react or prepare for what's coming. And I'm going to say this, trying to find out when the last time Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter, Mars, and Mercury those specific planets were in alignment is not an easy thing to do. You can't just Google search it. You can't ask AI because AI will just make stuff up if your questioning is not precise. Let's just say it would take you a very long time to lay out the planetary alignments in the last 50 to 100 years and try to find a pattern of events happening during or around those alignments. Beside the fact that there are different types of alignments. According to my sources, the last time there was a total solar eclipse over the Earth, which was Central Europe, the Middle East, and India, and a planetary alignment in the same month was in August of 1999, which was a Grand Cross alignment when the Earth lines up with the Sun, Moon, Uranus, Saturn, and Mars to form a cross. In the months to follow, there was the big Y2K preparation for transition because of the Y2K bug. So we had a technology upgrade and update due to the Y2K bug scare. The WTO ministerial conference was held in Seattle from November 30th to December 3rd, 1999. The conference was met with large scale protest and demonstrations against globalization and the WTO's policies. It was called the Battle of Seattle. So we had an attempt at globalization. The handover of Macau from the Portuguese Republic to the People's Republic of China was at midnight on the 20th of December 1999. So we had a transfer of power. Hurricane Floyd came through in September of that year, so we had a catastrophic earth event. 1999 was the end of the millennium, so we had Quite a few events occur within just a few months after that eclipse and planetary alignment. Now, biblically, 
it says not to use astrology as a tool for divination. But people in power absolutely do use astrology. And they keep track of things. They keep track of planetary alignments and astrological cycles, solar cycles, lunar cycles, procession of the equinoxes, galactic cycles, because they have to know what is going to happen to some degree if they want to stay ahead of us on whatever narrative they are pushing at the time. They will use pattern recognition by studying past events that coincide with specific cosmological cycles, patterns emerge that can inform predictions. For example, economic downturns or political unrest may align with certain astrological transits or solar cycle peaks. They will use astrological forecasting. Financial astrologers analyze cycles like the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction to predict market trends. They will use cultural and historical correlations. Many ancient cultures like the Maya and Hindus had developed very advanced calendar systems, cyclical calendar systems that align with cosmic cycles. They did that for a reason. They will use environmental and climatic predictions, solar cycles, lunar cycles, and Earth's axial tilt, actually, are some of the things that they will use to predict the influence of climate patterns. You see, once they have that knowledge ahead of us, then they can say things like CO2 is causing climate change. You see, folks, they will take that information that they gather. They will take the data they collect from their predictions and they will build infrastructure. They will build roads, buildings, dams. They will change things based on this information. It's not a mystical thing to them. It's more like predicting the weather months or years in advance. When you think about organizations like NASA, is it really about the final frontier? Is it really about going where no man has gone before? Or are they trying to take a closer look at things for astrological information so that they can make predictions? If people in power were to take biblical prophecy seriously, then I think they would definitely invest in keeping their eyes on those signs in the heavens. Well, that's all for now, and there is more to come. I will be returning to this topic again in the future, and we'll take a closer look at what is actually written as prophecy. I do have a recommended video for the day. Watch that video. It will be linked on screen at the top right corner of this video and in the description box and pinned comment below. Please hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Check out my other links in the description box below. You can also find me on Instagram at jwoodward. If you're interested in sending me any clips, reels, or information. Everyone have a great day or evening. And as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon. Every minute of every day, your body heals, repairs, and regenerates you from the inside out. Yet everyday exposure to heavy metals and toxins builds up and blocks your body's natural abilities. Natural zeolite is nature's answer to our toxic body burden. Breakthrough sound wave technology creates the world's first colloidal zeolite. Touch Tone Essentials, pure body extra colloidal zeolite helps clean out the chemicals from the body with an easy to use spray so you can make room for healthy in your life. Click the link in the description box below to order your supply of Zeolite today. 
because now is the time to live your best life.